I am at Hammersmith. I'm about the wrong Hammersmith. I want the one over the road. <laughs> Familiar faces. <laughs> So we've met by the station, uh, when I say we, uh, it's a lovely bunch of people from Talis, uh, a company that are working on the signalling for the new ATO, the new automatic train operation for the Hammersmith City Line, for all the subsurface lines, they're calling it the four lines upgrade, the 4LUG. <laughs> Barbed wire fencing. It is the HSCC, that's the Hammersmith Signaling Control Centre. To the untrained eye, you might think it's Thales, but it's Talis. I think they're a Canadian company. They're based in France. There's certainly a very strong French connection. Anyway, Talis, not Thales. Alice. And this is it. I've got a sofa with S stock maquette. Sean, can you give me a hand? We can load this into the back of my car. I could have that at home in my lounge. No? Probably not. We're doing the bit where we have a coffee and stuff, but in the meeting room straight away there's, there's a window and you, you can see it down there already. It's just your face, Mark. Yes. Oh, okay. Five okay. Love these old posters. Old posters. Oh, there's more. There's more. There's more. Okay. It's got that new smell. <laughs> So we're standing in the middle of the new HSCC and I'm buying the desk layout and there's a gentleman here that knows all about the desk layout. This is, this is Peter. So it was your job. Hello. Hello. What's your job title? Uh, I'm a lead systems engineer for Towers. Because so, you know there's that great story about BBC Television Centre. You know there was like the circular, the, the, the circular studio. The, 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 yeah, the main building. The, the urban legend goes that the gentleman sat in a pub one night on the back of a beer map, sort of drew a question mark as in how do I divide, design Television Centre? And in drawing the question mark he realised that he'd drawn the circular Oh, okay. BBC okay. But what you were telling me is that... No, so it's not my responsibility. I wish I, I could lay claim to it. from above, you think it looks like a couple of ears and eyes. And it's That's right, so, so we have kind of uh, the, the, the main mouth which runs along the bottom, which is happily a smiley mouth, and then these three desks here kind of make a nose. And then on either side you've got these big lobes of desks on both sides, which is almost like ears. Okay. So, so when you look at it from above, you kind of get a smiley face. Okay, so this is quite complicated to work out. I'm just going to stand over here. I'm standing in like the left-hand ear. So along the back there, behind all the, the guys they want to try this, that will be the new line control. The guys that actually manage the service pattern. At the moment, the district and the Met, uh, they will manage from a place um, above Baker Street, but they will move here along that wall. There's five desks. Then I'm standing in like the left hand ear there, and then the right hand ear of the smiley face over there, though, that those will be the two signaling areas. And then in the middle, you have service control and then maintenance. Maintenance, you know. <coughs> I'm responsible for turning it off and on again when, uh, when it needs a reboot. <laughs> the windows, by the way, they're currently showing tracker net. This might be familiar to some of you. Tracker net um, is a real time display, but it gives you an overview of where the trains are on the network. These ultimately won't be used, so although this is live running information, the, the actual uh, software that uh, Talis use will it'll, it'll be superior to this and it'll be uh, better. So they won't be using tracker net when it all goes live. So the guys who are looking after the signaling, are Institute of Rail Signaling Engineers licensed. So they're allowed to do stuff to the system following their TALIS training. So for example, in certain safety procedures, my staff on the operational side would telephone the signaling staff and ask them to do things. But there is always a double check in the system. So we've been working theatre style before with a big overview. Some of you came to this project 10 years ago, that was the plan. Have a huge video wall which is a great idea but you can't actually use it as an operator because mm. it's like sitting in the front row of a cinema and you're just doing that all the time. 
that was binned. Um, at Neasden and Highgate we were on a circular layout looking inwards. That was a bit of a nightmare for the operator because you couldn't see what your colleagues were doing so you didn't have any spatial awareness. So here we've gone back about 40 years ago we had a sort of a circular layout, but it makes you feel part of a circle. You can see what your colleagues are doing. And as the service manager, you can see action mm -hmm. across the oh, network. Yeah. Same so when you go to Watford Junction, would you like to predict when? Um, and there's pressures, you know, you can spend 400 million on a lovely shiny Watford extension, but then transport for Manchester and transport for West Midlands are wanting. The gentleman that's been chatting to us is uh, Mark. Uh, he's actually the service control manager for subsurface Hammersmith and City. Let's go and see if you talk to me on video. Let's get a quote. It's going to be a step change. Um, finally, the customers on 4LM lines, that's the Circle, Hammersmith and City, District and Metropolitan Line will get the same level of service that we're providing to other customers on our modernised lines. It's going to take a while to get there, but at the end of it, it's going to be well worth it. Can we come in? It says keep out. It clearly says keep out. And we're just, we just walk in. So, simulator training room. Um, you'll notice the desks look similar to the ones downstairs because they're absolutely identical. The whole point of this is to have um, immersive, interactive, realistic training. Years ago when I did my line controller and signal training, you were live on the desk. It puts extra pressure on you, it puts extra risk into the system. So this simulator system um, can replicate every fault and failure that could ever possibly occur downstairs in your wildest dreams all at once and give the operators plenty of time practicing it. Customers aren't necessarily so worried if something goes wrong but they want to know about it to enable them to make alternative choices. You know if you're at Victoria and you get on a district line and the train stops you could have walked or taken a bus or gone on the Victoria line. So if you've got the choices you can make those choices and go on. They're recordings, aren't they? Yeah. So we've seen the ICS equipment, ICS controlled from the front screen. These three overview screens will be the mimic display, which will be Talas's provision of a static line overview, a bit like the Trackernet system that we saw upstairs. And then these three screens are effectively the, the, the busy bit that a signaller would be doing or a person involved in running the railway. This is effectively the, the SMC line overview. Uh, if we zoom out, uh, the current all the way out, We've got the whole line represented, but the good thing is with the roll of a wheel mouse, you can zoom in to exactly the bit of the railway that you're interested in. So if you're a signal responsible for the first SMA, uh, the first bit of the railway that we're migrating, the first migration area, you're gonna want to zoom in to the Hammersmith area, which is here. Yeah. And I might wanna look up to Edgeware Road, so let's zoom in a little bit more. I just wanna know, Peter. What's yep. the worst thing that you could throw at someone? Could you what, like, as a simulation? Person on the track, train broken down, Armageddon. What? Oh, one, of my, one of my favourites is, is where you... Uh, favourites, be careful, God. Favourites. So our vehicle control centre has yes. three brains that all run in parallel, and they're thinking the same thing. Okay. If all three of them disagree, which never happens, okay. they go, oh, we don't agree, and they just all stop talking, and the whole thing shuts down. So you lose about a fourteenth of this railway, just, just drops out. But generally speaking, a common error might be a failed train, yeah. or, or a train stuck in the platform for an unknown reason, yep. and you've got trains backing up behind yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and the, and the signalman has got to like work out. That's right. So actually the alarm screen, the one on the right, the, the far side, is, is their first in indication it will flash up saying, oh, just so you know, this train hasn't moved for two minutes, do you want to have a have a look at it? And something brilliant that I just heard Mark say is that the software has even got, you've even programmed it so that it can deal with leaf fall, because the Metropolitan Line suffers from this. Oh my word, yeah. The yeah it it has this, they, they have to run the trains a little bit slower or timetable yeah, a little giant, bit. a giant switch they turn, which, you know, increases the signalling over that. But you're saying into the signalling software, and in, in this test software mm -hmm. here, you, you've got the software to to, to cope with that. Yeah, so if I saw a train slip sliding or three trains in a row slip sliding, I'd go, oh, there's something going wrong there, and I would apply a different brake rate to that bit of track, 
which will slow the trains down, they'll just be a little bit gentler as the drivers would, and that will hopefully mitigate the failure, and then we'll just carry on running like that. That is actually outrageously yeah. clever, isn't it? That's that's fantastic. Fantastic. very smart. That's very one of my favourites. <laughs> oh, that's one of your favourites. What, what, what's your favourite oh, bit? No. What's your favourite bit? Um, my favourite bit is He's something called the train graph, uh, and hopefully they've got it on here. I don't know if they run it very often, um, but essentially you have your timetable, Yes. Uh, let me find where we are. What time is it now? It's 9.30 in the morning according to the simulator. It's not. It's, it's like not. Tuesday afternoon, but it's 9.30 in the morning here. So we go back to that slot, roughly where we are. We're at uh, 28, yeah, about there. Yeah. So I can see the service as it's been so far. Yeah. And if I break a train and it, it falls over or, you know, it completely dies, yes. I can see what impact that's going to have all the way up till the end of the service. <laughs> I'm leaving them behind. They're actually going to go and have a go. There's actually there's an S stock. Whenever I say S stock, I always think of S club. S club seven. S stock seven. There's an S seven simulator inside that building. But I haven't got time. I've got to go to my next appointments. thing is called the four lines upgrade for LUG. Now last week, um, for a Londonist video, which will be online maybe next week or in two weeks time, you get to go and see where the trains are going up to Old Derby Test Track and they're being tested with the new system. But what the new system means is that the Circle and the District and the Metropolitan and the Hammersmith the City Line will be automated just like the Northern and Jubilee Line trains are now and they'll up the number of trains from 28 trains per hour on the subsurface lines to 32 trains per hour so it will become a lot more efficient. The other great thing that it will do is that at the moment you get, you've got these nice fancy boards on the line here and there are certain black holes and TFL LU admitted there's black holes in the data. An infamous black hole is in between um, the stretch that we're on now which is the stretch that's being done first. It's uh, in between Hammersmith up to Edgware Road in terms of signalling. A train, they can't show you exactly on a map where, where a train is. The new system will bring that all up to date. They'll know exactly where every train is on the network and every single station that's on a subsurface line, the circle, the district, the met, the HNC, every single station will have a next train indicator that will be exact because they will know exactly where every train is. That is what the system will bring. Here's the next train. It's a lot emptier. It's only about a minute behind, wasn't it? I'm getting on. Oh no, going to one more place. If it's a Jeff video, does that mean I have to point in the corner and say, click here to subscribe, click here to leave a comment, or something like that? That's good. All right. <laughs>